guys and welcome to ASFN Fishing. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all of you that subscribed already. Uh, if you're not, please subscribe to the channel that helps us. Hit that notification little bell button to receive uh, notifications each time we upload a video. And like the videos if it's gonna, if you find it interesting or you think it might help your fishing and uh, or it's just something you appreciate. Okay, it's been 15 years we've been doing this and bringing you as much content and videos and tips and tricks and ideas we want to share with the public to get you better results and we'll continue doing that for as long as we can. All right, today we're covering a trace for the southern pompano, very popular species this time of the year and I'm sure they're swimming around wild while we're all in lockdown. So it's the first day of level four, Friday, and uh, easing a bit off on the lockdown so we hope we can fish soon. So back on the southern pompano, Probably one of my favorite species to target. It's not uh, that I get to target them too often, I, and it's my own fault because I don't drive to the areas when they're there. Um, but they, we find them on the north coast of Natal in several areas and even certain spots on the south coast of Natal where they come through. They vary between sizes. The guys catch them from one and a half kilo, even sometimes a bit smaller, but from one and a half kilo to over 10 kilos. Some very big ones were spotted by, by often by, by Spiros uh, at Stabel and a lot of those spots on the south coast. On the north coast, fishing north of uh, St. Lucia Beach, if you go up north to First Rocks and those areas, certain spots at uh, Richards Bay, just north of Richards Bay, Mapalon, all those areas produce really good size. Even Tinley Manor, Red Rocks pr produce good size varying from two kilos up to the 10 kilo size. Now just before lockdown I received some reports of anglers hooking into fish they believe were over 10 kilos. Some really good size southern pompanos but as a rule under 4 kilos is what the guys get off the beaches north of Richards Bay which is uh, fished more often and the likes of Cape Bartle and all those areas. So that's the trace I'm going to cover today. Straightforward stra trace. They, they're very greedy feeders so when they're there you'll get the bite. If your bait's right the baits we use for them, obviously it's prawn, uh, crayfish, meat that you put on. You can put that on a bit of choco if you want. And then obviously the, the, the sea lice, very popular for them. Any of those type of species, even a bit of crab sometimes when you want to target them. But sea lice, very popular. Crayfish and prawn, very popular. Um, and also the bait Dean uh, really showed us once of putting a bit of crayfish on the bottom of your your uh, sea lice. That works a bit, very, very well as well. Now, a lot of things out there, kind of myths, but it does work. The guys do get better bites. Is using a bit of red colorant on your prawn or crayfish, whatever you use. It sometimes entice a faster or better bite, especially if you're fishing in between anglers that's all fishing for pompano. All right, so we're gonna start this trace today. What I'm gonna use, is the ring soy 3.0. You can go up to a 4 but 3.0 for, for the size I referred to. The 5.6 combi power swivels is what I use. And then I'm going to use a Mustad uh, sinker clip so that I can just keep my trace without cutting it. I'll just interchange my sinker. Sometimes you want to change from a cone sinker to a grapnel sinker to whatever sinker you want in that area depending on the conditions that day. Now, <coughs> the thing with Pompano, they favor fairly flat sea banks. We can reach the banks, they feed on those banks looking for all those crustaceans, but not a very rough sea like you would think in, in most edible species. You know, we want that working water for a lot of our edible species, even here on the north coast. But on a fairly flat, calm sea, uh, your chances are good to find them and then fishing on those banks. So you'll probably use a cone sinker. Well, I would probably use a cone sinker. That depends on you. And then I've put some red foam in on this trace purely because they, red has been a color you can associate with the Southern Pompano for better bites. All right, so 3 -o. And then for my line, I'll be using again the Siglon fluorocarbon 0.5-er. You can go to a 0.60 if you want to be safe, if it's close to reefs. But I like keeping it thin so there's a lot of movement. Um, they like clean water as well, so visibility plays a role. Gonna tie my hook on using a figure of eight.
going to measure that about 65 centimeters to allow for the knot. I want 60 centimeters because I want that movement. All right, I want at least 55 for my hook snoot to have that nice movement and putting foam on. All right, to entice the bite. Then five, six power swivel. The combi power swivel. And again, guys, I'll just, like I always tell you guys, the big loop of the bigger swivel goes to your leader and the bottom one's for the hook snoot and the small swiveling swivel is for your sinker line. Okay, and depending where you fish it doesn't really matter what I still go one step down on, on the diameter of my sinker line, so in this case going to a 5.0 instead of a 5.5 five, five, like I'm using on my hook. Okay. Cut the tag, measure it out. I want it slightly longer than my hook. Because I want to clip using the mustad clips. You also get the kingfisher clips, the sinker clips, which you just tie to the tie to the line, and then your sinkers clip on and off. I'll fetch a sinker just now to show you guys. Okay, very simple, there's my trace. Okay, then using a cone sinker, how these clips work, very simple. You stick them through and you clip them on. All right, straightforward. That will clip onto your hook for better, ca better casting. And then when that, when that actually hits the water, pop, your hook comes off, and your foam will take it up. All right. I'm going to show you guys a bit just on the foam, red foam, you'll measure how much you want, obviously on the size of your bait, and the foam I'll use when I'm not, I won't use the foam with, uh, with a sea lice, I'll only use it with, uh, when I tie a little prawn or a, a crayfish bait. Okay. And then how I do that, so I use a toothpick, I stick the toothpick through and wedge it in as hard as I can there, okay. And then I'll clip a nice little 45 degree on the other side. Then I'll push the back one on. You push the front one on. So you form a little sandwich on your hook. And that I'll just tie with some latex cotton. Neatly forming that little sandwich on the hook. And that you're going to cover with your bait, majority of it on the back of your hook. Okay. Now there you've got enough foam to really lift a nice size bait. I'll build a nice little bait on the back here with uh, some crayfish and put a little slither on the front to cover the foam. But this is a nice amount of foam to, to, that can lift up quite a nice big, but you just want it buoyant enough to be floating around there. The water and the ocean will do the rest. 
and uh, there's no way they swim past it if they're in the area especially if you're alone so if you're not alone remember to put a bit of color in keep some red color in put that on your bait and that might just get you the only bite of the morning guys thank you very much for watching this is your standard southern pompano trays running at about 50 45 50 centimeters my hook snoot and the sinker just slightly longer so i can clip it for casting and that will pop off when it hits the water but thank you for watching remember to subscribe if you haven't already and uh, hit that bell button if you want to be notified every time we upload a video and also like the video if it uh, is some meaningful or interesting information we're sharing with you guys. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. All the best for the lockdown. We can't wait to get fishing.